Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about funerals, burials, caskets, and death. Not something that one usually will speak about, or talk about, or even care to talk about. But I find it rather fascinating, especially in today's world of, of the funeral. Now, of course, in today's world of the funeral, things have changed a lot. You know, we don't have the massive funerals like we once had. There was a period of time from the uh, later Victorian age up to about 1980 in which massive funerals would take place. And that would be like a viewing for two days, maybe an afternoon as well, embalming an extremely ornate casket, flower cars, and this and that, and an extremely expensive affair. Things are starting to change now because it's prohibitively expensive and, in many respects, kind of stupid. You know, the whole idea of the funeral industry is influenced by certain cultures. Now, the Chinese its monarchy in ancient times preserved bodies. Of course, perhaps the greatest known are the Egyptians. You know, when you think of the South Americans and the Central Americans, there were various ways of trying to preserve their rulers, not very successfully. The Egyptians and the Chinese seem to have done the best. In fact, there are some remarkable um, mummies uh, from China. And there are some remarkable mummies from Egypt. Uh, there's a lot more from Egypt than anywhere else. You know, we think of Egypt as a culture of death, basically, because what exists today are its temples of death, uh, its monuments, its, its uh, tombs, etc., and, of course, the method of preservation of the body was nothing short of incredible. Of course, they had certain ideals on how to preserve a body. And that, of course, dealt with removing all of the organs from the body because they felt that they would corrupt the body, and that's very correct. All the blood was removed. The brain was pulled out through the nose. The only organ left in the body was the heart, because the heart was considered the brain, the center of emotion, the center of thought, the center of all activities. And it's interesting to think the influence of that Egyptian ideal leads us to the present day with Valentine cards. We still use the idea of the heart as where we think, where we feel, and obviously it's the brain, but... Uh, we're still using those ideals developed by the uh, Egyptians. The Egyptians would basically soak a body in a natron mix, and, and of course then it would be stuffed with essence and spices and linens and wrapped with amulets and urgents. And it would be put within a multiple layer of caskets, that would somewhat look like the individual that was inside. Now, of course, we never found uh, many mummies in their original coffins. They were all robbed in antiquity. There was only one, and the only one we have so far is the, uh, the whole funeral arrangement, the gifts, everything from the tomb of Tutankhamun, uh, who was the boy king, who we kind of call King Tut. Of course, he was in um, a multi-layered coffin. There's some problems, because not all of the coffins look identical, and some don't look like him at all, and there's some questions whether certain tombs were borrowed from to use parts and pieces. But... Nonetheless, that's a story altogether. We're learning a lot about Egypt because we know the language. Now, it's not that long ago. We didn't. 
It's only within the last 200 years, and we still don't know how to speak a lot of the, the Egyptian language. The way we learned about it, of course, was through the Coptic uh, religion. They, they is the last surviving use of some of the words in the Egyptian language. Now, of course, the funeral industry of Egypt has a profound effect upon us. I mean, temples to the dead. And the whole idea was their religious belief was that the body had to survive. Uh, in religious texts, the body was very important. Now, if you weren't wealthy, like a pharaoh or uh, uh, one of the ministers or heads of organizations or scribes, well, if you're just an average Joe in Egypt, well, you didn't get all of that, and what would happen is that you would be buried in the sand with a few items, and oddly enough, the sand did a wonderful job of mummifying individuals, sometimes better than the process used by the Egyptians. Now, how does this all influence our funeral uh, system? Now, you have to understand that the Egyptian system of embalming and funerals and burial uh, changed over time. Of course, throughout that whole period, it was against religious law to cut flesh. In fact, the, the morticians who would cut the flesh of a dead pharaoh, let's say, would be ceremonially stoned because it was against the law. But, of course, it was just pure ceremony, the stoning. And then, of course, the organs were pulled out. Once there was the influence of the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans in, uh, in Egypt, and, of course, that had a great deal to do with losing a lot of the language and also ceasing to use a great deal of the embalming skills that had been used before. Before long, tombs changed, and burial styles changed, and the coffins changed. In fact, the coffins would have portraits, beautiful portraits, on the front of the individual inside. There was not a great deal of work done to preserve the body, but the image on the front was more important. Now, I'm just going to speak for the United States here, because I'm not too sure of some areas and embalming in Europe, but I will say in the United States in general, embalming was nothing, never done. Nobody did it. Um, there are stories of bodies being preserved in alcohol. John Paul Jones, for instance. Um, I know in Europe, I will say one thing, the... Uh, Nelson, Admiral Nelson, uh, after the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, he was killed, and they put him in a barrel of, I think, alcohol, I believe, and brought him back, and they buried him. But embalming in the United States did not become a factor until the Civil War, really. Yes, embalming existed before, but it wasn't used by many people. You know, you got to think about it. Before that time, in most cases, when someone died, you lamented the fact, and then you put the body in a sack and put it in a communal grave. I mean, put hundreds of bodies in, and then you cover it up. There were no tombstones. Tombstones were for the very rich, for the common man. Occasionally, you'd get a box made, a carpenter would make it. There was no such thing as an undertaker or a mortician, although those trades would start to appear uh, in the 19th century. The thing that I find very fascinating is, as the 20th century has come onto the scene, the whole idea of funerals have changed, the whole idea of burial, embalming, no longer are they called morticians or undertakers. They are funeral directors. And the other thing is that, you know, years ago you'd put somebody in a box and if you wanted to 
display them. You put them over ice to kind of preserve them for a day. And then you'd put them in the ground and the body would putrefy and become part of the earth again. Um, it isn't until the time of the Civil War when so many pe were people were being killed on a massive scale that uh, embalming became the norm. Soldiers who were killed in battle were, uh, were embalmed and sent back home. Abraham Lincoln's son, Willie, was embalmed. And Lincoln used to look at his body for about a year after his son died. He used to visit the mausoleum, open the coffin, and talk to his son. We have an industry today that's not quite like it once was. At its height, uh, in the 20th century, the funeral industry had all kinds of caskets, you know, the Ambassador, Excelsior, all these various names, and these were solid mahogany or solid oak or solid walnut or, or, or solid bronze, I mean, for instance, or copper. All of these various things were made, and they were tremendously expensive. And some had box springs and double mattresses to make your loved one comfortable. And it's kind of sad, it was kind of pathetic that they would take advantage of the bereaved. But that was what was done, you know. There's nothing like trauma at the time of death. You know, we are grieving, we, we are in pain. And so the end result is that we are willing to do amazing things. Now when I was a kid, I, I worked at a funeral home for a while to make some money. My job, I had a couple of jobs there, I did not do embalmings, I was an embalmer. I, I uh, dusted off the caskets, I studied all about them, I'd open the door for funerals occasionally, I'd help as a pallbearer at times. Um, it was interesting, I learned a lot, but uh, I, I watched grief uh, firsthand. And I watched the whole process firsthand, and I came to the decision that it's ridiculous to spend a fortune on funeral materials. You're putting it in the earth, and you're never going to touch it again. Now, if you're going to bring it up every year and say, oh, isn't that a lovely casket? You're never going to do it again. So why would you want something so ornate, so fancy, so expensive? I'm personally of the opinion, put them in a real cheap pine box, put them in the ground. You're not going to take them out. And uh, unfortunately, there's one other thing that I thought about that's kind of interesting as well, and that is sealer caskets. They're expensive because they create an airtight seal, and they say that is to protect your loved one. Well, I hate to tell you this. If you want to protect the body and insist on its longevity, don't get a sealer casket. Because a sealer casket encloses the body and it devours itself by all the various germs and microbes within it. A casket in which air can circulate is a casket in which someone will last a very long time inside. It's just an interesting thing we don't think of. Anything that's airtight is going to lead to, to the complete destruction of the body. So I just happened to think about some of this and thought it would be interesting to talk about because our funeral industry, amazing industry, it's at one point was everyone was having funerals. Now people are getting cremated directly from the hospital from which they die. Uh, you're not seeing the massive funerals as we once did. There still will always be some. But I think that industry has changed a lot. And it's interesting how time and history has influenced uh, the industry. And to this very day, we want our dead to look good. Because the body is important. Just like the ancient Egyptians. Kind of interesting when you think about it, that how ancient times have influenced our times. 
when it comes to funeral practices. So, just some ramblings on that fact. Thank you.